Thursday night, August 12th, 2021, on the set at the Marriott. The penitent here with Life of a Felon. I think we were freestyling. We shot a video earlier. We, we cranked out one video that was going to go through via, via Life of a Felon. So check that video out. Life of a Felon freestyling on choices we make when we're younger, man. You know, get away from things that could have been aggravated. But no good, man. No good. So we'll talk about, I think I want to talk about my, I guess my first time going down to TYC, man. How did that go? 13 years old, I go down to West Texas. They call it Children's Home at the time. I did some history on that. West Texas Children's Home, it was a base, an, an Air Force base back in, in Coyote, Texas, in West Texas. Okay. So back in 74, they converted it to a children's home. And I found out that that is owned, or the property is owned by the universities of Texas. I didn't know that the universities have a lot of land in Texas. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these facilities and institutions sit on them places. But anyhow, so I got there, I'm 13 years old. First time down, I'm way out in West Texas, far away, man. It's like desert out there, man. You see nothing but them tumbleweeds. Oh, yeah. Don't freak out on those, man, because... Like a movie? Yeah, you see them on the cartoons. Movie, like, yeah. you actually see them tumbleweeds, yeah. man. Rolling. <laughs> I said, damn. Yeah, it was really happening. And there's no way of escaping over there, man. There was a couple of... There was an escape that happened over there, but we'll talk about that. Uh, so I'm 13 years old, man. I'm young. 13 years old, man. 13 years old. October. I remember. That, that, that I do remember. I, there's a lot of things I don't remember nowadays. But I do remember October... 89 got out in January 90. So I think the first fight we got into, I got into, was with this uh, black brother, man. He was from West Texas. He was from that area, anyways. Okay. He was from Monahans, I believe. I forgot his name. I remember his name, but I forgot it now. I forgot his name. Did you have any friends locked down with you there? Yeah. Matter of fact, uh, it was, uh, I'm going to say his first name only, Mondo uh, Richard Reyna. Okay. I seen him not too long ago, Richard Reyna, and then we, uh, Pete Valle. It was four of us that I remember clearly. We were, that we were young, 13. So we're on the dorm, man, and we're going to chow. We're getting ready to go to lunch. Well, they call it lunch, I guess. They don't call it chow. You know, we're still like in a youth facility. So this guy, he took my seat. I don't think he did it intentionally, though. You know what I mean? He just took my seat. You know, nobody knows about this stuff. Well, you know, I don't think. But you know, he took my, he took my seat, man, and I was pissed off, man. I told my homeboy, hey, man, this dude took my seat, man. I said, I, I told him, I'm going to get him, man. After, after we get back from child, man, I'm going to have to, you know, I'm going to have to hit him up. Yeah. They say, no, nah, man, we'll help you, help you. I said, no, nah, man, I got this, man. I got this. So we go to child, man, and he said, we call him to the restroom. Call him to the restroom, man. We got him. <laughs> we dropped him, man. And I went, that's the first time ever, man, I go through lockdown. I 13 go to lockdown. years old? Yeah. Lockdown. 13 years old, lockdown. I don't even know how long I'm back there, man. I don't remember. So Probably yeah. a day or So week. what happened? Y'all were y'all y'all took him to the restroom. What y'all called him over there? Y'all had his people call him over there? I don't remember the details, man. But he went back there. Yeah. It may he may be he may have been under the impression where it was just gonna be me, which I didn't mind, but my homeboys kept insisting, man, we we'll, we'll, we'll jump. They wanted to jump off. I said, man, I got this. I, I got it, you know. But they wanted they wanted it to go down like that, so we got him. But see back then we're youngsters though. See, you can't do that in adult prison. That shit don't fly, man, boy. There'll, there'll be a riot. You know, black dudes, they're gonna, there's gonna be a riot. But back then, we're kids, you know what I mean? So that nobody knows about that. In fact, the other black brothers, they were calling us the Rat Pack, man. They called oh, us yeah. the Rat Pack. <laughs> there goes the Rat Pack. They called us the Rat Pack. We jumped on that boy, man. It, it was nothing, man. You know, got, got your respect off the back, you know? But like I said, I was only 13 years old, man. I was like in the, the friendly dorm. Cause I'm, still, I'm 13 years old, man. I'm like young. They have like some 17 and 18 year olds, like over there in the rougher dorms where they're doing like a year. I think when you were, when you were given a year back then, that was considered a lot of time. Like man, he's doing a year, man. That's a lot. My homeboy Mandito did a year there. Cause he was, you know, he was, you know, he was, he was, you know, he was out there. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Mandito. Yeah, he's a good dude, man. I yeah, we're gonna bring him in. We, I know we work, man. We get tired, man. I've been tired. I want to do it. Sometimes I call it off. I said, man, I'm tired, man. Yeah. But anyhow, so so yeah, man. Um, also, when I'm there, there was an escape. And keep in mind, man, you're out there in the desert, man. 
I don't know how these guys they didn't get caught, but there was like it was like a black dude and a couple of Mexicans. They escaped, man. And supposedly they committed some more crimes while they were out there. I'm talking about like burglary, auto theft, assault. So the rumor was they gave them guys a lot of time. But I don't know because we, we, we can't figure how much how they got that much time that quick. But anyway, that was a story. That's what always stuck in my mind. I said, wow, man, that's, that's some serious stuff, man. You're in the TYC. You're just doing a year. But you escape and you do all these other crimes on escape. And now you're going to be certified as an adult. And now you're gonna go to prison. Yeah. That's some serious business, man. You know, I don't even know what to say about that, you know? That's why even when I wasn't in, in, in the life of crime, I was always kind of, I know it sounds ironic or, or preposterous, but I still was cautious of the things I did, you know what I mean? Like I wouldn't carry yeah. guns with me or there's certain things I wouldn't do, you know what I mean? To limit my exposure to these certain crimes, you know? Cause that's some serious business, man, you know? Kind of like being like a smart criminal. Yeah. Yeah, try to be. Yeah, that's a good way to put it, man. Yeah, like an intellectual. Because I mean, you do got white collar crimes. You know what those are, right? Yeah, white collar crimes. White collar yeah. crimes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, man, that's that was the first time I went down, clicked that boy, and I did my three months there. Got out in the winter time. They flew us home. That was an amazing experience too, man. Oh, that was the first time on the plane, right? Yeah. You were saying? On the last video. Yeah. If I remember correctly, they gave us a choice. They said, do you want a bus home or do you want a plane? And I was scared of planes. I said, well, let me try the plane, man. <laughs> so if I remember, went to San Antonio. They went to Midland, Odessa. That's the airport. Then we went to San Antonio and then to Houston, then to Corpus. So I got home in Corpus, man. It was a, it was a good experience, man. I was like, man, that was like something, man. Like three months is a long time, especially when you're only 13 years old, you know, getting mm. sent up, you know, for crimes already at that age, you know. It's, you know, it's a story in itself, you know. But yeah, I wasn't on the plane. Or was it like a regular plane or it was like by a, yourself? Like, uh, yourself. yeah, I believe I was by myself. Yeah, yep, I was all by myself, man. Mm. Oh yeah. So you got that experience on a plane? Might as well, I mean, you're right here, right? Yeah. yeah. So did that, hey, so after you all had took that dude, did he give you any problems after that? No, oh no, oh no. He was good? Then, yeah, oh yeah, he was good. He was good. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like that too, even like you get kind of like, people that do certain little things out here, like you kind of get those, um, Flat, like flashbacks like man i can't believe this dude just did this yeah like, and it's like sure, nah, I, I gotta let it go because sure. now you think about okay i got a house to lose i got cars to lose i got you know a family this and that you know what i mean so yeah. like even even at my job man there, there there's some people there that kind of like smart off to me and i turn around like you just tell me that man like yeah, it would have yeah. been different back then but yeah now you got to think about okay man i got a house i got you gotta let that stuff just slide off your back man that's very that's very interesting really man what you just said you know why because all the stuff that i used to do when i was a kid i was a kid right. i was like like i said believe it or not i was eight between eight and 16 years old i was doing all these crimes and going in and out yeah and i didn't have any responsibilities you know what i mean i yeah. didn't have no bills or no family man i'm a kid but now what you just said it's like i'm an adult now of course i'm an, a mature adult professional so like when something like that happens I just let it ride, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you, have, you to. have to, man. You, you have can't. To. You can't. You know, how they say you gotta even in prison, even in prison when you get mature, you kinda like choose your battles. I mean like, you know what? It depends what it is. Some stuff you can let it ride, it's alright. As long as they don't put their hands on me, that then that's a different story. Then you have a right to self defense. That's another story I wanted to talk about, how I was so sh well, I wouldn't say I was so sharp in the law that people didn't even realize that they can still raise self defense in prison because it's 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 a right. So why wouldn't it apply how the law book say it says your rights don't stop at the prison gate. You know, even though you're behind bars, you still have some rights, not as much, but you do. But self-defense should be one of the human rights. You know what I mean? One of those, I forgot what it's called. Uh, anyways, it's one of the right, inherent rights, one mm -hmm. of them natural rights. It's oh, a natural okay. right. It's a natural law right. Like, hey. It's in the Bible too, you know, if somebody comes and invades your home, your your castle, the yeah. law of the castle, what do you call that? The uh the law of the castle, you know, like if they come and invade you, you have a right to self-defense, man, you know? Yeah. 
so it's like, it's like that you know as long as nobody puts your hands puts you know puts their hands on you or, or, or you know then you have a right to self-defense you know that's yeah. for sure you know but but up until it gets to that point until you're backed up into a corner then yeah you know but otherwise you know sometimes you have to use your discretion and you know just let some stuff ride you know what i mean words are words you know you can you know but um yeah it's just it's it's just different now like you you think yeah, twice is. before you before you do something because now you actually got things to lose now you actually give give a damn about something yeah before you didn't and now it's just like you got to let things go but you also got to let them know you know respectfully the first time you yep. know like you know don't that's, play with me like that that's powerful in itself because how they say you know what i learned from an old convict he said man sometimes this is deep because he said sometimes you gotta just whoop them with your mind yeah because it's all in the mind dude that, that, like you said yep. verbal and communication that's mental right there mm -hmm. you can just whoop them with your mind you're good you ain't gotta get physical you know what i mean yeah so that's what it's all about man yeah we can either we can act like two men or we can act like some two kids you know it's up to you mm -hmm. but yeah man the way i see it now is now i'll i'll talk to that person you know yep. what i mean and let them know hey i exactly. didn't like this i didn't like that just don't do it again and you'll be surprised man you'll that be surprised. that sit down right there would make him realize hey man this dude you know he's because not everybody's cut cut from that same cloth as us you know what i mean mm -hmm. everybody's cut different and maybe they're they're growing up was always playing around joking and, and yeah that's just them and with us that's we were more like serious but we play around but we that's played it. around in our way to we knew we knew okay don't cross that line we knew that but they exactly. don't know that they don't know that and they yeah, cross that deep. line all the time and it's like then that's when you have to sit down and talk with them exactly you know what i mean but you see like through the mistakes that we we both made it matured us to to act like that now because if we never would have made those mistakes or come from where we come from we wouldn't we would be acting just like them exactly it's through that experience man it's through that experience you get your knowledge and wisdom that that's that's valuable you know what i mean that wisdom that experience you know you've been there and you've done that you know you know how it's right. going to end so you have that advantage you know yeah and and now too like um even like some like younger kids they think that oh this is bad that's bad man being being a gangster man is taking care of your family going to a job that you don't want to go to and working trying to make this paycheck trying to have nice things for you and your family taking care of them doing things like that 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 that's what impresses me now not not who who can act the craziest who's the toughest who has this that it's like ah oh man who can yeah. take care of their family who can be there yeah. for them support them and and things like that and you know have nice things that hey man i came from this but look what i got now mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah and, and to make it out of out of that it's like a, a famous rapper once says my favorite rapper he uh, he said the rose that grew from concrete mm -hmm. you know there were they, they didn't they didn't wonder how the rose grew from the concrete which is the rugged places and stuff like that because it's impossible for a rose to go through the concrete mm -hmm. all the, the the bs that they went through and stuff like that and still something beautiful came out of it oh yeah you know what i mean yeah yeah and it's like excuse it, me guy. Yeah, yeah it's like you know here here are my broken pedals you know what i mean like here's here's the real me but look where i came from and i still came out beautiful from all this stuff that i've done in my past yeah now now look at me you know what i mean and I like that, man. That, I like that. That's that's something a uh, favorite rapper of mine quoted, man. And they don't they don't make them like they used to. Because you know what that reminds me of, man. It reminds me of uh, how God he says God gives his battles to his strongest warriors. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Or something like that, right? Yeah, he, he gives, gives he gives his hardest his... battles to his strongest warriors. Yeah. So like the things that we've gone through, you know, God. And there's another scripture that backs it up. It says God doesn't give you more than what you can handle. Oh yeah. So that's why I realize that sometimes, you know, some of us are, like you said, we're cut out for certain, certain tests, you know what I mean, in life, you know? Yeah. That's so true, man. That's so true, man. Yeah, but the mind, man, that's, that's like you were saying, man, that's how you really uh, put people in their place. It's not always about arguing and shouting and yelling and fighting, yeah. you know, best revenge is with your mind, man. It's, it's, it's powerful and, and how you can use it. It's up to you if you're gonna use it. And, and, and when you say that, what comes to my mind is like when you're talking about arguing and shouting. It's like, man, I'm I'm 46 years old, man. And it's like I don't even have energy for that. You know? <laughs> I don't, man. There's there's some gurus out there that I study. Uh, Sad guru. He talks about when so, when you're talking to somebody, you're you're having and they disagree with you. Like I don't even argue anymore. He's like, you know what? You're right. 
Like, I know I'm right, but you're right in your own mind, so I'm not gonna argue with you because that's just wasting my energy and words. Like, you know what, I just, yeah, you're right, man. Just agree, just agree, and that's it, you know? Yeah. It's not gonna hurt, you know, if I'm right or you're right. Who gives a <laughs> damn, you know? I guess I guess now <laughs> now it's okay for people to have their opinion, right? Yeah, I mean, if before somebody, I didn't if I didn't like your opinion before, man, I was gonna change it. Right. I was gonna change right? it. Right. I'm gonna what argue. I'm, I'm gonna fight with you. We're gonna do something <laughs> to change that because you're gonna see it my way. Period. But now it's just like you know what? I guess it's okay for you to have your opinion. I'll let you yeah, have that free that, will. That's mature, man. That's I'll let like, you have that free will. That's that's powerful, man. <laughs> you know, imagine if everybody could do that, man. It'd be imagine how many fights and struggles and strifes. Shit, man, it, but, it's even dangerous, man, to even fight. Cause, man, one wrong hit, man, that's oh, it. Oh, man, yeah. That, I, that's it, man. And I, there's been so many cases on that here in Corpus, just everywhere. I thought about that. We were talking about a story earlier about remember that guy that hit that dude in Waterburger. You were telling me about that. Toga? I didn't know about that, but you had told me. It was about like that. a, I, I would call it like a, like a road rage, but at the parking lot. Yeah. And I don't know, man. This guy, I guess he had some kind of skill. That was another thing I was going to talk about, too. And I was going to make a comical about it because there's that uh, comedian guy, Monty Scalpo. He, mm -hmm. He's an older cat, too. Like He's like my age, in fact. He grew up in the 80s in New York. How Back then, how we used to fight just regular. Yeah. You know, you might, have you seen that one? Uh -uh. He said, you might come out with a black guy. But now, when, you, when you're in the streets and you, you confront this guy, you don't know what he might know, man. Yeah. He, it's, a com it's a comedy the way he puts it, though, because... Nowadays, these guys know them. That what do you call that? MMA. All oh, that MMA stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, you never know, man. So. Yeah. Hey, man, it's all right, man. You know, it's all good. I mean, times are times have changed, man. Times have changed, man. You know, man, it's a different world, I, I, I see that, man. I know, like back then, like if I saw that, man, and I knew that me and this dude were gonna get into it, I'm gonna go old school, man. I'm gonna carry some brass knuckles or something. I'm gonna lay you out. You ain't gonna embarrass me in front of my girl yeah. or in front of anybody. I'm gonna lay you out. <laughs> oh yeah, man. We're going on 17 minutes, guys. We don't want to waste yeah. too much of your time. I know um, we want to do, start doing some shorts, also some short ones. But again, uh, the penitent here with special guest, Life of a Felon. Uh, keep uh, Subscribe to our channel, yeah. comment, keep our channel active, keep it growing. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Go on Facebook, spread the word. We're the only ones right now in Corpus doing it. Yeah, and um, yeah. shout out to all the YouTubers, man, that are doing it in prison and yeah. things like that. It's, I mean, it's not yeah. easy. This ain't easy, but we're still doing it. And uh, subscribe to our channels. Yeah. Also, before we go, uh, yeah, stay tuned. And like he said, 